This is Dan Bjorklund, Landis Technical Agronomist. You've probably heard many people saying that the biggest challenge with southern rust may be trying to get the corn harvested before it falls down. Uh, the guys in the south that have dealt with this over the years constantly are posting that on social media. And when the Iowa Crop Tour scout in western Iowa said that there was a lot of yield potential in this corn, but it was also Iowa's corn was dangerous. Um, I thought, okay, that's what he's talking about is the fact that this rust, and he, he came out of six out of seven fields just covered with rust, kind of, kind of like what I'm seeing. It's 71 degrees today, so at least I've got the ability um, to not be so hot, but man, when I when I look at this field, which was planted in May, and I'm thinking about what's, what, what the southern rust has done in here and how it's compromised the leaves, how do you have enough leaf surface here to even produce the sugars to fill these ears? I mean, there's, these are uh, nice looking ears, and as I, I mean, holy cow, guys. This is a field over by, in Central Iowa, over by Boone. I broke a, an ear off and you can see that we're only, we're only about a quarter milk line. We still need three weeks here. How are we gonna fill it? So I think the key thing that I learned from the corn, the professional, <laughs> I think the thing that I learned from um, the Pro Corn Tour and the guy from Iowa was that something that I've said many, many times over the years. Oh, just a second here. I know it's only 71 degrees, but this is for, this is for Landis Dara Harris. No, that isn't vodka. This is water. I carry one of these with me. I carry this one of these with me every day. Um, and I stay hydrated. Dara is always telling us to stay hydrated out here in the fields. Not so bad today, but uh, I digress from what I was talking about. Why does southern rust cause sustainability issues and harvest challenges? Well, because let's look at this corn plant. We, if you've come to any of the meetings we've put on, we've said in the past that corn basically is a live plant factory. You've got 35,000 of them here. And I was showing you the root system area. And the root system is your assembly line. And it brings in the raw materials and, and the nutrition and these leaves are your solar panels that capture sunlight energy through photosynthesis, and then they combine with those raw materials and produce simple sugars that then are further developed into more complex starches, and that's your yellow here, go moving down that kernel. And you need to pack that starch in there uh, to get the, the most yield. So, I thought, well, let's do this story of this plant factory. Let's start at the bottom. That looks fine. Then I removed, you can see some of them lying down here. I removed all the leaves that were compromised on this plant. Guys, look at what I got left. That's not much of a solar panel. How are we going to produce enough sugars with that? to fill these ears. You're not, you're not gonna. And so that's why the plant basically then tries to take the sugars out of the stocks. And it'll, it'll take, a, it'll, it'll just suck these stocks dry to try to fill this ear. I don't think it'll get it done. We've got, we've, we're just too far gone. And this was sprayed August 4th. It just was sprayed too late. Once the rust got going, you were not gonna stop it. You, you saved a few leaves at the top, but they're not gonna be able to fill these ears. 
and the stock is going to be deplenished. It's only the 24th of August right now. And in a month, uh, or even less than that, these stocks are going to be dead. So then the saprophytic fungi that came in through the root system early in the season, those cold, wet uh, spring conditions we have, that don't do anything. They just live between the vascular bundles, the xylem and the phloem until they die. And this is going to cause premature death. And then they'll hollow this out. And the only thing you have holding this plant up is the rind. And you better hope you have a, a strong rind. That's why a lot of you guys have just routinely applied fungicide every year just to have plant health to improve standability. So I just told you why. Not enough sugars produced because you don't have enough leaves left that are healthy. They can't fill the ear, takes it from the stock. Um, man. I don't want to get too hyperbolic here. I mean, sometimes you run out of adjectives to say I, I've, I've been breathing southern rust spore for the last going on six weeks. Um, so maybe that's part of the part of the problem. But this is about as bad as I've seen it when it's 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 everywhere. I mean, it's just completely uh, taken over uh, this field. Um, and that's why this field should have been sprayed, you know, in July. That's why some of you who didn't spray should have sprayed at VT. Some of you who sprayed at VT needed to come back in, depending upon your hybrid susceptibility, and spray again. And all there are going to be all kinds of testimonies as to what happened. We've got tons of fields where we came in and, and put strips in just, just to test the theory. Is VT good enough? especially when you have a susceptible uh, hybrid. Uh, so we'll present all that data at farmer meetings and at webinars at Landis. Stay tuned for that. Um, that's gonna be uh, critical. I'll come back probably in another couple of weeks and look at the final end game of this field, but my God, this is bad. Um, Dan Bjorklund, Landis Technical Agronomist, signing off for now.